Hello guys, hope you're doing well. Uh, in this video, I want to just touch bases about IB Miner. So in previous couple videos, I was showing uh, connecting to the network, I mean to the pool. And currently I'm mining on the hump pool. I was not able to set it up for K1 pool. That's my favorite for Caspa. But however, you can do Cedra now as well. I, I did not decide yet if I want to do a Cedra. Probably not. I want to keep it on Caspa. Average hash rate, it's 10.5 terahash. I was before, in previous video, was showing you guys that I was able to overclock this with frequency change to 475. But lately, after I updated the firmware, it's kind of uh, back up to 460. So I have to look into it and uh, see what's going on. But the chip status came up a lot cleaner now. I don't have a lot of you know errors anymore on the chip so we can select like less than three errors and you could see it's only a few chips and, and only like one or two errors so really minimum yeah less than one actually all of them one or less and or nothing so that's a pretty good uh, sign for a stable mining and then the temperatures, obviously, uh, only uh, one chip here on the last port above 80. So it's, you know, taking the temperature really good here. Um, what else? We can see the frequency above 60 now. Uh, nothing above 60 and nothing below 55. So they're... Basically, all the chips accepted 460 frequency running on that frequency. However, I tried, I put 470, 465 here. And for some reason, it does not do a frequency change anymore. Maybe because I did update the firmware. So, um, I do, I can reset to factory setting and try to do an old firmware, I guess. But I don't know if I think, if I should, because it's pretty stable now. Uh, I'm getting a pretty good hash rate and after resetting and restarting it's been six hours and I'm uh, pretty stable usually get the chip status errors a lot of errors here when I overclock this but now it's no rejection and it's pretty stable I guess I'm gonna just leave it on these uh, settings for now so let's take a look on the uh, website here, right? So I did receive the a link. So you're you have to make sure you use official link for iBlink. Uh, there's so many um, links for iBlink website. They actually have this noted all on top of their website page. So there, you have to be careful because there are a bunch of the fake or uh, cheaters, what they call them. So they list some of these websites uh, that it's fake. If you order anything there, it just you're gonna disappear. You're gonna lose your money, especially sending crypto. And even I was trying to get uh, the order on. Um, showed you before is like iBlink.io. It's just gave me a first. Uh, you know impression that it's a legit website because if you look at this website it doesn't really look actually uh, it's a very good website to be honest I would think this is the fake website uh, because very basic everything really uh, straightforward then you click buy it now and it's like for BMKS and it's not an efficient uh, uh, inventory right so all this kind of stuff but they do have tools they do have firmware upgrades so it's it, it is more like to official versus if you go to those fakes you won't be able to download mainly a firmware so make sure you're, uh, you do your due diligence when you uh, search for iBlink website so they do have these tools and firmware uh, which I upgraded to the 6.0.23 uh, firmware upgrade and also they have this minor tool so you click this to download uh, unzip it and you basically open it similar to the ice river monitoring tool 
it just look like this minor tool so it's all for different IB link devices here the KS3 I mean BMKS that is not listed here so you have to select all select your uh, IP range what you want to search after you click scan it will quickly uh, scan all your network for all IB link see how quickly it is it's a lot quicker than ice river tool and it will give you a lot of information here so it gives you the all three of your boards here listed um, your mac address running time six hour the version of the firmware here on the first place and if i scroll down to the side it will give me uh, what's running the frequency here on each board for 60 uh, giga hash right or what is it for 460 hertz probably right and then we have the temperatures on the each port exhaust and then we have hash rate average here so pretty much all the chips number on each board and um, what else there the error status here see like it shows the in, per in percentage and then also the rejection rate uh, listed here there is also some few other info uh, power, not sure, Henji, new, I'm not sure what's that, scan time, it's when you scan it, and then you have a voltage for, uh, see, 13.4, 13.5, so the range of the voltage is set up, and then power consumption at the end, and also number of bad chips, which I don't have so far, which is good news. So, uh, it's pretty accurate. What I like, it gives you a power consumption, really, really accurate. I already showed you guys before on my Emporia, Emporia uh, monitoring uh, tool that it shows about the same uh, power consumption level. So, what you can do with this, uh, what I like, that you can really reset, restart. There's a bunch of uh, options here. You can restart, reboot machine, update machine. So you basically can, I believe, install your uh, firmware from here. I haven't tried. Yeah, you can select the file and update. Um, so you don't need to use web GUI. You can do a static IP, set your D, DHCP, set pool from here. If you click here, it gives you the option to set the pools. Uh, I don't know why is it four of them, because you can only do three. So I guess you select three and then change all this information here uh, what else here um, so yeah bunch of other delete name restore machine I guess you can restore to the factory settings I haven't tried that one yet but that probably can do soft restore without um, doing that resettings on the actual machine and um, billing device I'm not sure what's that uh, one machine so yeah I'm not sure what's that doing actually I don't want to click something that is gonna uh, offset my machine uh, you can set voltage hmm. oh so you can just set the voltage here right from here uh, and uh, set the temperature safe and then execute minor as CMD execute system cmd so i'm not sure i haven't tried this guys i don't know that's just more going into the hardware i mean into the uh, settings of the miner itself inside uh, kind of like uh, messing up with the firmware or with the bias but other than that it's the yeah pretty much everything here i don't know what's inspection um machine checked yeah so there is no inspection available for this device but I'm not sure what's that. Let's let's see what it does. Ah, it just start testing. Yeah, I don't know what it's doing. It's basically here reporting on the right bunch of uh, uh, one device found and blah 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 on 2004 204 uh, IP address. So uh, to be honest, I don't know what it's doing. But anyways, you can scan just basically through your IP, find your device. Uh, connected to uh, to the pool so this this minor tool is pretty useful right for the eyeballing device I guess it's similar to like ice river tool uh, we use in it doesn't have like each chip temperature like what we have on the monitoring tools when we use this for uh, 
a rather a6 like ks3 we can see every chip 412 chips on every board right the temperatures as well um, and what else so we have just the basic exhaust temperatures not sure if there's fan speed i don't see the fan speeds either on this uh, information so yeah it's it's not a lot but it gives you a lot of uh, options there you know there is uh, you can set actual yeah there is nothing that i found that you can change settings for your uh fan speeds other than uh, the temperatures limit and i'm not sure if this temperatures limit actually adjust the fan speed a little bit because if you set your higher and lower temperatures i guess uh, the potentially this is uh, actually to decrease your frequency at certain percentage that will reduce your uh, uh, temperature of the miner and i don't know if the, i didn't notice that effect i tried to change it back and forth but i didn't notice if that change the speed of the uh, fans so it's kind of interesting that the fans speed controller is kind of like preset there is nothing much you can do to adjust your fan i guess they just want to play safe and make sure this is fixed with the sensors so trying to keep below 67 degree and um, if the temperature goes up closer to 67 the fan speeds goes up and if the temperature drops it's the fan speeds will go down so that's how it's kind of regulated here in i believe in this area so other than that is yeah i still cannot get this to change anymore after update so i guess this is my just only choice for now there are a bunch of logins uh here uh information for your uh, miner and data just saved there what else nothing much other than that right so and then you check it on the pool make sure your hash average rate keeping in the proper uh, hash for 10.5 tera hash in average right so this other uh, 15 and one hour on hump pool usually changes up and up and down but in average that's what we're looking at this level to have 10.5 tera hash because that that will affect your payment so so far we mine 5800 caspa and that's in about six i want to say days right um what else we have so that's pretty much it um for this minor overview that's what i want to just guys show you where uh where your data would to find here i guess if you have hyperlink you already kind of explore this all uh i don't know if you use this tool i found that this tool kind of interesting and cool you can find your ip on your network uh if you're just new connected so that will be helpful um, gives you a few uh, additional informational stuff for errors and rejections and all kind of stuff that you can find on the web GUI as well uh, and probably a lot more on the web GUI than just this this is just more of a basic stuff but this tool kind of helps to a regional probably settings mainly if you don't know what the IP number you can don't have ability to scan your uh, router or to find the miner's IP address so that's this tool will be really useful um, so yep uh, that's pretty much it guys for this let me know what you think and if you're doing any other discovery on this IB link just post comment down below consider subscribing to the channel and click the like button and I will see you on the next one